very grateful to the Minister for giving way, but does not that underline the point of why we need a public inquiry to raise um, that evidence and that the agencies that, that um, exist in Scotland which are giving uh, these contracts are the best place people to be able to tell us the contracts that they are giving, what is going on in those contracts, and we could do that all in, all in public and we could involve a whole range of agencies in Scotland, including the police, um, who, where there have been uh, suggestions about where some of the information that was passed to the consulting association came from. Thank you, Minister. I mean, I, be drawing to a close, please. I understand the point that, that the Mr. Smith uh, makes, and uh, there is uh, no doubts in my mind that uh, there are many, many people that have been adversely affected um, by uh, blacklisting. But I hope that he will uh, understand the point I make and accept it in the spirit uh, that it is made. Uh, that it is appropriate for the Scottish uh, Advisory Committee, who is uh, continuing its investigation, uh, seeking uh, further evidence, uh, and as a, a government, uh, we will look uh, very uh, seriously and closely uh, at the final report uh, when it comes away. And if I could uh, move on, uh, presiding officer, in the little time that I do have left, um, to talk about the action, uh, the action that we can uh, do now and in the, the, the future. Uh, as a government, we have invited uh, the unions, STUC, Unite, Unison, uh, GMB, to work with us on the development and strengthening of guidance for public bodies on addressing the issue of blacklisting, uh, both in terms of the procurement processes and in public contracts. And we intend to circulate uh, an initial draft uh, of this uh, guidance to the unions shortly and to convene uh, a meeting to get their input and to get their very uh, valuable uh, dialogue. And we want to explore uh, with the trade union movement the potential for asking additional questions of suppliers uh, at the selection stage of uh, a procurement exercise and also holding suppliers uh, to account through uh, revised terms and conditions uh, of uh, contract, including uh, issues such as termination clauses uh, for those who breach uh, relevant uh, legislation. Uh, we are, uh, as members have uh, noted, uh, considering uh, carefully what measures can be included in the forthcoming uh, Procurement Reform Bill to deal uh, with inappropriate conduct, uh, including blacklisting uh, by companies that are bidding for public uh, contracts in Scotland. And if I can just end with the, the words of the Deputy First Minister in a very uh, recent debate in Parliament, she very clearly stated uh, that she wanted procurement in Scotland to be a force for good uh, in terms of sustainability sustainable economic growth supporting our communities, but also in terms of supporting and cementing uh, ethical practice. And I'm very sure, presiding officer, uh, given uh, the tone and tenor of this debate, that we can indeed uh, move forward uh, as uh, a parliament uh, with uh, very uh, due uh, diligence and vigilance uh, to ensure uh, that blacklisting is indeed uh, consigned to the history books.